Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Scotty. It's time for Liz and Scotty's Potty a Yellowstone Recap Edition. Season number five, episode number seven. We're going to talk about the episode here a little bit. We're going to talk uh, here in a few minutes towards the end. We'll talk about some of the music because it was one of those episodes where there was some, some definite really cool songs that were featured. And we're wanting to get better about maybe finding out who those are and share them in case you want to uh, go find them. But uh, overall, your thoughts on the episode, Liz? I thought it was an okay episode. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll start with you first though. Like what was one of your favorite or most noteworthy scenes? I'm I'm with you. It seemed like another one of those kind of maintenance episodes. Yeah. No no huge uh deal happening, although we're getting close to the mid-season finale, so there may be something coming. I'm going to start with my favorite line. Okay. Which leads to my favorite scene. Love that. But they're out uh, sleeping under the tents. I mean, everybody's out there, the Cowboys and, and everybody else. And Ryan and Laney's character, Laney Wilson's character, Abby, are in a tent sharing a tent together. Ryan's getting up early because he's got to go out and join everybody. And, yes. And, and Abby says the line, you better be worth this walk of shame. Half my church is camped out there. <laughs> And I thought, okay, that was really good. <laughs> yes. That was really good. And then that walk of shame, sort of, there were two or three ladies who were doing the walk of shame. And the ladies kind of all sitting around having a cup of coffee with Beth, I thought was a really good scene. was so good because you really don't see Beth interact with the ladies that much. Right. And so you got to see all of them together right there in front of the fire. And, of course, Beth is just ripping one after another with them, like zingers. And I liked it because it was she was doing it with a smile on her face. One thousand percent. You, you, know, you did, She did not come across as yeah the witch yeah. that she typically is. The, this this was not a battle that Beth was having with his women. It was just giving them a hard time and kind mm-hmm. of a wink and a smile. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was. And everybody kind of got that and appreciated it. And I just thought that was a really sweet. Sweet deal. Yeah, and on the same note, a little bit more serious, Beth finally reveals like her biggest secret to somebody other than Jamie. Yeah, her and Monica together. That's a, that's a neat, kind of an interesting dynamic, and it was good to see that. Mm-hmm. There. Okay, so what is it you've been saying all morning? You've got issues. <laughs> yes. Well, let's just go ahead and dive into that. Why? Why is this just an average episode for you? Well. When the trouble with the the herd, the cattle, started happening and they started talking about having to move the cattle elsewhere right. other than Montana, I was like, oh, here it goes. Here's where we get into the like sixes part, which is, of course, down in Texas where um, Jimmy is right now. And it's just, it's one of those storylines that irritates me a little bit just the jimmy and the sixes storyline and so if we have to spend more time down in texas with yellowstone just going to be a little bit frustrated well and you don't dislike jimmy not at all but the whole the whole storyline of jimmy down there took away from what was going on at the ranch One thousand percent i felt like they spent way too much time on the jimmy storyline and it just really wasn't moving any other story along jimmy was having girlfriend problems like that's what we could sum up texas with right. now i'm sure it's not going to be the same way but i would just prefer staying on the yellowstone ranch there's a bunch of problems that we can dive into and just focusing on those yeah. i feel like that is where yellowstone shines of course is highlighting montana and highlighting that beautiful ranch and when we go away from it it's just not as good yeah and it has been revealed that there is going to be another series it's going to be called sixes yes um jimmy is going to be a part of that series you knew that he was going to be on this season because he was in some previews so i would imagine that we'll start seeing him at some point here yeah. i will say i was very surprised i i saw an interesting review i think it was in variety magazine and the writer was saying look i'm a city person when they start doing the cowboy talk i almost wish they had the old style vh1 pop-up video they would show a video okay and there would be these little bubbles that would pop up which would give you clues as to things that were going on in the video oh i gotcha they were like i think we need some bubbles to explain some of the cowboy talk yes and i thought about that because many times i will think okay i didn't understand that but if it's important they will explain it down the line yeah and that, honestly, that's how I felt with the cattle talk that happened in this episode right. and the political talk. I got a, I got the gist of the political talk. Right. I, I don't think they wanted us nor needed us to understand like 
the logistics of everything that was being talked about. But for a few times in this episode, I got lost. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I'm intrigued to see because they're taking important characters down to Texas as of right now. Granted, something could change. Something could change to where Beth and Rip and all of them are going to still be in Montana. But if they are going to focus on all of those main characters down in Texas, I'm going to be irritated. I was very surprised when they started talking about moving the herd. I didn't think that much about it. And then the first time that it came up, how long will you be gone? Oh, a year probably. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking maybe just for a little while. A couple of months. Yeah. So in my mind, something's going to have to stop that. They they can't do that for a year. They can't keep Rip away from all of the stuff that's going on at I the ranch for so. a year. So whether or not it's something that they just, you know, they fast forward through the winter and they come back, you know, and it's the spring and they're on the way back or mm-hmm. something. Well, here's my other worry, too, with that. Rip took along some of the most popular cowboys, correct? Right. Right. That is his little group. I hope Rip doesn't stay back and these cowboys go and then we don't see these cowboys because the cowboys consisted of Ryan, Walker, Teeter. Like, it's a whole bunch of our favorites that are going down there. And I'm going to severely miss them if if we just don't see them very much anymore. There was one thing that, that jumped out to me that I had never put in words to, but I love this. Ryan and Colby together are funny. They're so funny. It's just, and it's never for a long period of time. It's always when they're sitting there watching something else. Like when they used to watch Jimmy and he was doing something silly. Just their little one-liners back and forth were funny. And there was something yesterday when they were watching them brand the cat, like watching Summer, um, you know, having to give them shots and some. And they just say the funniest things. Well, they had a couple moments because that was one of my favorite scenes was watching Summer, like, give them the medicine or whatever, the cows. But when they were at the fair... And Teeter wanted the bear, and she was saying, bar, the bar, the bar, the bar. And Ryan and Colby were the ones that had to, like, subtitle it for everybody else. I was going to say, before that scene, I was going to say, I wrote down in my notes, one of my favorite running jokes is the fact that nobody can understand what Teeter said. Yes, yes. It it used to be the Cowboys couldn't understand what she was saying. Yeah. Then all of a sudden there was an episode where John (laughs) Dutton couldn't understand. He looks at Rip like, I can't understand a word she's saying. (laughs) And then it came back again yesterday. Now, here's my problem with the fair. It was like, always to this point, it's been kind of subtle. Too much. It's been the one joke and going on. Now, you don't need to hammer it home with the bar, the bar, the bar. She was saying it over. I'm like, no, you're taking a great, hilarious, funny, subtle joke. And beating it. Yeah, but I feel like it was fine in that in that scene because it was a funny scene already. Right. And so they just used Teeter to bring it home. But I yes, so. when when uh, John's like secretary or assistant or whatever was helping and she was saying like girls rule or something like that. Right. Girl so, power. Girl, girl power. power. Yes. That was so funny. Yeah, that was good. All right. To me, the whole going to the fair thing was a little cheesy. Really? Yeah, but that's where Lainey Wilson finds out, Lainey's character, Abby, finds out that Ryan's leaving. He hadn't had a chance to tell her yet. They have their little scene. My question is, is that it for Lainey? Do we see Lainey again, or are they done? It's a good question, because I thought the same thing. In my opinion, and I don't want it to be the case, I think she's done. I think that was the end of her character. Right. What do you think? Ah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning that way. I don't think. At least there were, there have been no indications that she was going to be on this for yes. a really long run. Um, and they always hinted she was never going to be a main character. Right. But it was great to see that side of Ryan's personality. I think he's a wonderful actor and character. And it's been good seeing more of him. Yes. Which I have enjoyed. So if she does ride off into the sunset, I'm kind of sorry, but I get it. Here's to hoping that we'll see more of Ryan in different scenarios right. other than being a cowboy. It was cool, too, to see the cowboys that got picked to go to Texas, how excited they all were, and they all thanked Rip. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Thank you for this opportunity. That was kind of an interesting thing. And you know what? Bringing it back to Ryan and Abby, when Ryan's trying to explain why he's so excited and why he didn't turn down that opportunity to Abby, I thought that was really great because yeah. for somebody that's so removed from farming and ranching, I I would be kind of, why are you taking me away from my home right. for a year? Yeah. But for Ryan and the rest of the Cowboys, like, like Ryan said, this is their Super Bowl. Like this is what they were born and bred to do, and they love it. And now they get to like just sit in it for so long. Yeah, 
So it'll be exciting to see what happens there. Will they actually be down there for a year? I can't imagine that they will. I got to think something's going to happen that is either going to cut that trip short or or bring them back. But Regardless, we'll see. it's just going to take up some time that I do not want to get taken up in in right. Texas. Right. And and there was more movement with the the Jamie and Sarah story. Um, they pretty much did the entire last two episodes without any clothes on. Every episode yeah. is them laying around in blankets, which is in different rooms. But uh, it looks like he is going to uh, to go to the state house or whatever, try to have his dad impeached. I was going to say, let's talk about real quick the teaser that we saw for next episode. If uh, next episode is supposed to be the mid season finale, if we've got to wait two more months after that, <laughs> we're going to have issues. <laughs> With Taylor Sheridan. Here's what I noticed from the trailer. Jamie's got a black eye and a busted up lip. Yes. When he's talking to Beth. So, But they didn't show you how he got it. So did he get in a fight? With, was it Beth? It very well could have been Beth the first time she sees Jamie after Jamie says he's going to impeach their dad. And again, he's coming at her with Beth. You know there's only one way to save this ranch. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, but I think Beth has a good idea, and we got to see that a little bit in this last episode where they start, you know, producing the steaks or whatever Selling like the that. meat online. I was like, yeah. okay, here we go. This is how we're going to save the ranch. Yeah. Obviously, there's going to be problems that arise, but I like that avenue. Yeah. All right. And the music was really, really good. There was live performances from Zach Bryan. Uh, we played his song, Something in the Orange. A lot of people have asked about him. Some of his songs have been featured, but when they were at the fair, when they were at the cheesy fair... Um, Your opinion. <laughs> his band was playing. Zach Bryan was and performed a couple of songs, and there were uh, a couple of other ones, too. Early in the episode, a song called Mountain Song was by Flatland Calvary which was kind of neat. It was one of those songs that was playing while the Cowboys were doing their work. And then there was another one that was playing um, when they were doing the the branding and Summer was trying to give them the shots and was freaking out. Uh, L.A. Edwards' song called Let It Out. So L.A. Edwards, Flatland Calvary, and Zach Bryan were uh, featured musically. And I thought it was one of those good kind of musical episodes, too. So. Yeah. And it really does seem like Zach Bryan has like some kind of a contract with Yellowstone because they are featuring his stuff a lot. And I'm not mad about it. Yeah. But I'm excited to see where his career goes after being on Yellowstone so much. All right. So one more episode. So I guess the mid-season finale is supposed to be coming up this week. We will hold our breath that we don't have to wait for two or three more months after this mid-season finale for uh, the rest of... Season five. Anything else you can think of that you want to say that we left out? Nope. Very intrigued for next episode. All right. Thank you so much for uh, listening to us chat about Yellowstone. We'd love to have your thoughts, too. If you want to shoot us a text message, you can send it to 800-455-5257. You can always shoot us an email if you want, clear99 at zrgmail.com or a Facebook message, and we would love to have your thoughts and share them on the next potty. But we appreciate you taking the time to track this one down. Yeah, really simple to find. All you have to do is search for Clear 99 On Demand wherever you get your podcast, or we are at clear99.com. It's a clear country morning. Oh, the great eggnog debate. <laughs> yes. So normal me would not want eggnog, just like normal me hates candy corn. This year I'm pregnant. So I decided, oh, candy corn actually sounds good. Worst idea ever. So I have a feeling if eggnog sounds good, it's going to also be the worst idea ever. (laughs) Can I ask what happened with the candy corn? Did it just upset your stomach? It it just didn't taste good. Oh, no. It it ended up in the trash where it belongs. Well, get just a little tiny carton of the eggnog and just try it. Yeah, I can always pass it on to my mom. I know she likes it. There you go. It won't go to waste. It's a clear country morning.